A court petition of inquiry to the new High Court a couple of weeks ago regarding Section 90 of the new Assembly Act 1966 to the eligibility of two names included in the Makifu electoral roll, claiming it incorrect that the two names should be included in the Namukul electoral roll has been dismissed by Judge Wilson Isaac. However, in passing his decision, Judge Isaac also stated that it is open for any petitioner to file an application for judicial review of the decision of the New Public Service Commission. In the event that an application is filed, he directs that it is filed together with submissions in support by this Friday the 10th of June. The Crown is to respond by Friday the 17th of June. Judge Isaac will deal an application for judicial review on the papers alone. The petitioners this afternoon said they will file an application for judicial review by the end of the week. We'll bring you more on this story in our future news bulletin. Last week, Niue was the focus of a peer review conducted by a team from the Pacific Island Forum to assess the ways in which foreign island countries with the support of development partners use their money and the aid they receive to ensure a better life for their people in making progress towards achieving their national priorities. The peer review team spent a week on the island in discussions with various key stakeholders in the peer review process. A process adopted by all member countries of the forum where counterparts from other countries review relationships between countries and the development partners through a mutual exchange of experiences and highlight lessons learned from the review process. The peer review process clarified a number of presumptions and identified a number of significant challenges faced by countries. We spoke to the new peer review team leader before they departed the island on Friday about their views on new special situation and strategies to addressing gaps in the system. Your country has a very special situation. Uh, while you have uh, geography on your side, with quite a big land mass, uh, you don't quite have the numbers in terms of human resources to be able to effectively and efficiently um, address the challenges that you face as a small uh, island country in the Pacific. And what we have offered, as we have stressed to the government, is not a prescription of what should be done, but simply to offer suggestions as to options on how Niue can itself address uh, the constraints and some of the obstacles that remain, and keeping them from uh, taking the process forward. You will find that the situation is your, minist your departments are having to uh, contend with a whole number of projects, discrete projects that are to be implemented in isolation. And as such, that has created more problems than anything because you don't have the human resources to be able to manage these activities. So what we have suggested is that there's a need to look at your range of priorities as articulated in your development strategy. And perhaps there is an opportunity to repackage them so that you have a number, um, a number of uh, well-prioritized uh, things that you can do and do well, uh, given the capacities that Niue has. And I think there's a, a need also for Niue to explore other ways by which you can manage uh, aid, such as taking a programmatic approach, so that you don't deal with every individual project, which, if I might say, these are all very much donor-driven. I think projects come already packaged from the part of the donors, and sometimes those projects don't necessarily align themselves to how you're going to address your needs as articulated in your strategic plan. So these are all, um, these encompass some of the issues that we have been looking at. But what we wanted to leave with Niue is that it works and that we hope that through the peer review process we'll be able to bring in a range of experiences um, from countries large and small that they can choose from uh, and hopefully find a strategic fit uh, 
in terms of new waste situation. Now, Mayor Simi says that it is hoped that through this process, countries can strengthen partnerships and develop frameworks to include mutual agreements in terms of commitments and obligations of countries and donors. The proposed aid coordination unit will also have to be strategically located, but that is a decision for government to make. A representative from AusAid was also part of the peer review team, and he said the biggest challenge for a small country like Niue is to get into the driver's seat and that it should come up with strategies that will allow it to negotiate assistance from development partners as equals. The report on the new peer review team is expected to be finalized within six weeks of completing in-country visits and will be presented to the government of Niue. A court ruling two weeks ago on one of the most popular night spots on the island to evict the op owner of the bar has been given two weeks to vacate the premises. Today, Matapa bar owners started removing their personal properties from the premises as ordered by the judge of the Niue High Court, Wilson Isaac. The dispute on who is the rightful owner of the property continues, but it is established also that the village council of Higurawaki are the recipients of the Matapa premises. Owner of Matapa's bar, a member of parliament for Higurawaki, Mr. Opili Talafasi, said he is sad that the result of hard work and potential development for the village has come to an end, but they will reopen their business tomorrow at the old premises. At this stage, it is unclear what decision the village council would take on its premises. A continuation of climate change dialogues that took place in New Year a couple of months ago saw a new direction by Australia and SPRIP to include other small island developing states in other regions. The Caribbean and the Indian Ocean and its focus to establish a robust plan in tackling climate change, adaptation and disaster risk reduction plans. The conference in Samoa was attended by over 150 participants from many small island developing states, discussing issues and reviewing addresses on how to tackle the challenges faced by SIDS. Some of the challenges is to relook at lessons learned and continue to establish mechanisms to overcome them. As one participant from the Seychelles said, their voice in the African continent is muffled by those bigger countries with different priorities than theirs. Coupled with piracy issues, the Seychelles continue to struggle. Rosalind Pulitomisiapa from the New York Mets office said, Nui's challenges are very similar to those that voiced their concerns, but it's the responses that is slightly different. However, she said, Nui does not escape from the premonition that the issues and challenges of climate change need urgently to address. One aspect of the discussions for Niue is that many of the small island developing states have merged their climate change and disaster areas to cohesively work towards addressing the issues that are parallel. Niue was represented by the head of the climate change office and its senior officer. The island's cricket season ended on Saturday with a victory to Tuapa Uhumotu won by a narrow margin against Tamakotonga. Though it was tough, the final game between the two rivals ended 15 minutes before time for Uhumotu, who took the title of cricket champion for 2011. Tamakotonga batted first with a result of 298 points all out. The second half of the game continued at lunch for Tuapa, whose first few batters went out in consecutive bowls. However, as the game progressed, the momentum took on for the winners, scoring 306 from 16 batsmen, two still on the field, and nine batsmen to go. So the final score, Uhumotu 306, Tamako Tonga 298. As for the second game for third and fourth placings, Makifu took on Mutalo, with Mutalo winning 273 points from 21 batsmen, with two on the field and two to bat with Wilds. McKiff was scored 261 runs all out. The next cricket event is expected to take place during the New Year Constitution Week in October. New Year's off-track bike race, the Rally of the Rock, did not disappoint with a good representation from local cyclists. 
in the early hours of Monday morning, Queen's birthday holiday, 19 competitors gathered to the Mutala Village Green for the start of the 40-kilometer race. The weather held up for most of the day as the riders were challenged on a course that spanned half of the island. The Rally of the Rock began in 1999 and has been a draw card for mountain bike enthusiasts, but this year the number of overseas competitors was down compared to previous years. At the end of the race, the senior men's and women's categories new champions. In the senior men's category, taking out top honours was Willie Sanitelli with the best time over 82 minutes and 38 seconds, followed closely by Des Hipper 93 minutes, 57 seconds, and Alan Tano 98 minutes with 22 seconds. The junior men's Thomas Peter blitzed his competition, coming first with a time of 82.47, just a few seconds shy of the overall winner, followed closely by Janam Hopatar, 83 minutes 39 seconds, and Bob Morris with 90 minutes and 36 seconds. In the women's category, the title was claimed by Canadian Stephanie Verily, 108 minutes and 2 seconds, last year's winner only a few seconds, Shy of top spot, Jade Pusimani had to settle for second with time of 108 minutes 11 seconds and Dive Morris in third, 121 minutes and 6 seconds. The prize giving in barbecue was held at Washaway Cafe. And to end our news bulletin for tonight, the Mutala Uluvehi Marine Day was ahead despite choppy conditions at sea. The weather was not kind for the eager fishermen and women who turned up in the early hours of the morning only to find waves crashing down on their dreams to catch the big one. Although there was to be no fishing out at sea, some were left to fish for bargains at the many food stores set up by the community with a hint of seafood delicacies with oysters, prawns and more mouth-watering wonders. The event organised by the village council aiming to bring together people to a historical spot for some fun time out and although the essence of a marine day is to head out and catch some fish or see delicacies, the day will not be dampened by this minor hitch. The hope for next year is that the conditions will be more favourable for some action out on the water. That's our news bulletin for this evening. Good night.